Ladies and gentlemen, how are you? Hey, good morning. Today is August 2nd, and I'm actually here in La Piedad, Mexico, and I wanted to show you around my little home here that I'm going to be staying in. Uh, it's not very nice. show you a little bit of Mexico. I showed you a Serbian home, and uh, this is an example of a Mexican home. This is just a, it's in a part of this city. This city, La Piedad, has maybe, I don't know, 100,000 people. I'm in a very far corner of the city. It's called Banquetes, and uh, I think it means like banquet or something. Uh, some of my students always laugh at it, and uh, a lot of my students at the school always say, oh, that's a bad part of town, you know, but, you know, everybody here is friendly. Uh, something really odd about Mexico, um, your neighbors, uh, of an evening, everybody goes outside and sits in this little, by all these little homes here. We have a little block here, and everybody goes outside. The kids play soccer and football, and usually I come home and try to watch TV, and these kids are out there, oh, Charles, Charles, you know, it's like, oh, jeez, you know. So they're very social people. So if you don't, uh, if you don't go out and speak to the neighbors, they, they think of you as odd, you know, which is a little bit different, you know. Bigger cities in the United States, such as this, many people don't know their neighbors. In a small town like where I'm from, you do. Everybody's friendly. Everybody knows each other. But in a larger city of about 100,000 people, I lived in Chicago. I lived in Miami. I lived in Plantation, Florida. Uh, even Terre Haute, Indiana, which is a small city in comparison. I mean, I, I never spoke to my neighbors ever. I didn't even know who they were, you know. So it's, it's something that it's hard to get used to, you know, to be social to everybody when you're not used to it, you know. Um, one bad thing about this town, very few people speak English, and it's, it's really frustrating at, at times for me. Um, yo hablo poquito español, so I can get along with, you know, the main things, but it's still, it's really embarrassing, you know. And just like in Serbia, uh, when you go into a, 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 a tienda, which is a store, you know, you go in there, and I like to wear my headset and not socialize because I know they're going to ask me questions. Every single time I go up there with the money and everything, I give it to them. They always ask me some freaking question. It's so embarrassing. I'd say, no entiendo. And then whoosh, everybody stares at you, you know, immediately. So same in Serbia. Every single time I would go somewhere, I'd put my headset on so I wouldn't have to speak to them. Like back home, I would do that, of course, and I, I guess because I understand the language. But anyway, I wouldn't... You know, I'd say hi, you know, and that's it, and thank you, and that's it. But, you know, here, it's, they're asking me questions every time, and it drives me nuts. Um, so that's kind of frustrating, and then trying to find specific items are difficult here. You know, if you don't know how to say it, you know, it's hard to find. The markets here are very similar to Serbia. Um, you go in there, they've got some meat, and they've got lots of vegetables and fruits, very little canned food and frozen foods. So somebody like me that has no idea how to cook, damn it's hard. You know, it's a difficult thing to do. It, this, this country, or many, many other countries, are not made for single people, you know, that don't know how to cook, they're in a hurry, you know. There's lots of places to eat here, little restaurants similar to Serbia, uh, but even more so here in Mexico. Every street corner, there's somebody selling tacos in a little stand. Um, there's also, all over the place, there's little fruit stands with sliced up fruit. I don't eat those because I'm, uh, the hygiene, I don't know how clean they are. Uh, it must be easier here than it is in the United States to get uh, a food license to, to vend food. I think somebody told me, and, and forgive me if I'm wrong, they said all you got to do is pay, it was a small amount of money to get a, a license to sell food on the corner. I don't think there's as many restrictions in the United States. In the United States, you have the Food and Drug Administration, the Department of Health and uh, whatever that would have to come and inspect to make sure everything's clean and that you're cleaning stuff, you know. So I, I, I like that way better. So I do eat some of the, the tacos and stuff and the taco stands, but not so much, you know. Um, anyway, this place, uh, I decided to do this, to come back here to Mexico, postpone my Serbia trip once again. Because of my mama, I'm kind of nervous about mom, and I don't want to be, you know, nine hours, ten hours flight away from the United States. And last winter in Serbia was god awful. It was horrible. There was snow up to here, and and uh, I didn't want to do that anymore. 
Also, I'm fat. I'm getting fat again. I weigh 205 pounds. Mexico, La Piedad, was the greatest thing that ever happened to me because of my weight. When I was here last year, or the year before, in 2010, I weighed 211 pounds, and I, I dropped down to 165 pounds. It's a hell of a lot of weight, almost 50 pounds. So this time, I'm planning to get back down to the same weight, and I'm going to keep it that way. The main reason I lost weight here is because I walked from Banquetes, which is here. My school is here. It's like four kilometers to walk there and four kilometers back. So I'm walking like eight kilometers, nine kilometers a day. And I don't eat the food here very often. So I eat tuna and uh, macaroni and cheese. I know it's not healthy, but I'm walking a lot. And uh, some more vegetables and stuff in the market. So and I plan on even doing more because I want to try to get in way better shape, you know. Um, so anyway, that's kind of it. I want to show you around this house and then I'll show you around my school later on because I've got a young lady, I've never met her, but she's going to be living in this home with me. And she's 22 and she's from North Carolina. So the school has two teachers. So that'll be nice. A young lady here uh, and she speaks Spanish, so I don't. So that'll be kind of, you know, kind of, it'll be good in a way because last time I was here, it was me and this other teacher, none of us spoke Spanish. So <laughs> we had, we, we struggle. Uh, another funny thing about this area where I live, they have security here, um, but he's on a bicycle, and we call him the Whistler, because he'll drive through here every night about, I don't know, three or four times a night, he, 10 o'clock at night, 12, 1, 4, whatever. He drives around here every, two, every minute or so, he'll blow his whistle, and uh, I guess it's to deter crime. Uh, so you have to pay him, and then every Saturday he comes by the door and will knock on your door. I'm not usually here, but uh, you have to pay him 20 pesos. It's like a dollar fifty, a dollar seventy-five uh, for doing that. And uh, so you know the school reimburses us for that. So it's kind of nice that somebody is looking out for us. Um, here in Lapidad, the mayor of this city was shot and killed in November of last year, and they said it was like the 28th or 29th mayor in Mexico that's been assassinated. So there's a big problem here with drug cartels, and uh, you know, other than that, the people are fantastic. They're friendly to foreigners, even though they don't understand us very well. Usually, most people are friendly, and and I had no problems, you know, knock on wood, uh, last time I was here. So I'm gonna get healthy in December 23rd. I leave here, and uh, then we will see. Then I'm gonna go back probably to the United States for a bit, and I'll be in Serbia in the spring. And then by that time, hopefully it'll be beautiful, I'll be fit to ride a bicycle, and I'll have more sponsors. Um, I've kind of drug my feet on that, uh, but I was, I'm very disappointed still. You know, I've had 13 people um, donate to me, and, uh, you know, so it's, it's going to take more than that. You know, I'm going to spend all my money on that, and I don't want to do that, you know, because then I'm going to be stuck in Serbia with no money, and <laughs> what am I going to do? So, you know, this will help me try to get some more businesses and... Uh, and things involved in this. So uh, I've got some friends in Serbia finally that contacted me. And their parents are friends with some owners of some companies. So maybe that'll help. Um, and I don't know. We'll see. That's how it's going to go. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to coming back to Serbia. I really, really miss it. You know, I really miss the people. I miss the food. I miss the nightlife and everything. So um, I didn't disown you or anything. Believe me. But this way here in Mexico, it's beautiful. It's 80 degrees all winter. Um, I can make money here at this little, a little money at this school. I get a place to stay here, and it's good for my health. So I need it, and I'm close to home. If I want to go home, it's a three-hour flight or four-hour flight. You know, a lot closer than it was on the other side of the world. And uh, so I can check on mom and dad, and we'll go from there. Anyway, let me show you the house. I talk too much. Thanks. Here's the here's the bars. Of course, we've got bars on the on the doors and the windows. There's my ugly pink house. We've got bars on the windows. I'm in 237. Look at the house. This is similar to Serbia. It looks like if any little earthquake would come, all of these houses would just fall down. You know, there's the front. We got a front gate that's locked, and uh, the neighbor's house is a lot nicer. Looks like. But you come in here. Here's our living room. We got one couch here. A little love seat. You got another bigger couch there. We got a ceiling fan. We don't have an air conditioner in here, which you don't really need it here. At night it's kind of chilly, which is nice. I got tile floors. One thing here in Mexico that's funny outside, everybody sweeps constantly here and mops their outside sidewalk. Never heard of that. 
me and the other teacher never did and, and the neighbors thought we were slobs you know but it gets really dusty here there's our TV there's actually three channels in English which is good I watch that of course get a lot of books I read a ton of books when I was here last time too here's one of the extra bedrooms we've got got a chair thing That's it. big closet nothing special here's our little uh, place where you clean up like your little vanity uh, you've got that, you've got a little tiny mirror there, see that? Here we got a baño, see that? We even wrote some stuff on there so we remember. Here's our baño, there's the toilet, got a beautiful gray seat on a pink toilet. <laughs> They're similar to the United States. Then you got uh, the shower, shower in here, it's kind of nasty. Nothing special, regular. Then we got my room. I took a bigger room since I was here one time before. This is my room. There's my old suitcase, some Mexican decorations they had on the wall. There's my window. It's got bars on it too. Little vanity. There's my flower, like my flowered sheet. It's not mine, believe me. That's what it, where it was. There's my little closet, Mexico flag. I don't have my Serbia flag. I should have brought it with me. I brought some Serbia stuff for the kids because I'm going to teach the kids some Serbian. Then you go in here. Here's a little entry. There's the kitchen. Here's the refrigerator. You can see there's not much in it. I made some spaghetti. It's some really cool thing we have in Mexico. It's like it's like macaroni and cheese, but it's with spaghetti noodles. So I like it. I got that freezer. Nothing special. Here's these chips. You can get these for like seven pesos. It's like fifty cents. They're homemade nacho chips, and they're really good. Here's our stove, dishes, kitchen. Here's our kitchen, little our dining room, I guess you'd call it. Nothing amazing. Got a new microwave from last time. Then out here, I'll show you. I don't, I don't want to go out there because it's dirty. We've got a bicycle. See that stuff? We have to buy propane here. And like usually once a month it goes dry. It's $30 to fill it up. And then you've got, uh, I don't know if you, uh, no, I don't want to do it. Right over there on the wall, you can see it. Yeah, right there. That's the water heater. It's outside and it's exposed. This is a little square place where we do our laundry. There's the, 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 uh, the, Damn, washing machine and the little spinner. I'm going to show you sometimes. It's so funny. It's so old. It's like something we would have used in the 1800s in the United States. It's so funny. But there's a little clothesline, and there you can see the neighbor stuff. You know, nobody can really get in here. So really, that's it, guys. It's going to be a long video, so I'm going to get rid of it. I'll show you my school. I'll show you some other stuff. So thank you. Zdravo. Pause draft. See you later.